Well, hello YouTube. Here we are back in the shed, ready for another story time with Steve. So, no drama. I'm not gonna hype it up. Straight to the point. Um, yeah, my engine is blown. You've seen the title. So the engine is gone in the face, and it's only a few days ago we were right here, and I was giving you story time with Steve on how I'd blown my diff, and now I blow my engine. Right, so I wanted to bear with me a bit. I'll fill you in on all the details as we go. Um, but I was on track at Castle Coombe and I filmed in a different kind of way. You know I've had issues with YouTube lately. I've changed a few things about how I've been filming. Um, the plan for the track day was I was going to film while I'm on track. I did a little bit of talking in the car with some things that were going on. Then what I was going to do at the end of the day was just film an outro for the video, throw some clips together of the track day, make it nice and easy to edit, and just give you a summary of what happened on the day. So I've got no intro to the track day or anything like that. <coughs> so this is how we started off. Beautiful sunny day. Um, done the first session, car felt great. Second session then, I was uh, out in the car. Once I'd broken the tyres in, I'm on Dereza. Dereza 03G, I think they are. The car was absolutely incredible. It was so fast. Every mod that I've done to it lately was just unbelievable. The EBC brakes were phenomenal. Um, the tune, the power was just incredible. It was so fast. I added 10 mile an hour GPS speed down the street compared to stage two. It was rapid, really rapid. So anyway, my plan was, I wasn't going to try and chase lap times. I've done that so much in the past and I've ended up spoiling track days when I look back on them. Um, so what I did was, I went out, done that first session. I did one warm-up lap, one flying lap, and then I was in traffic and then I cooled down and came in. So I had one flying lap and I'd done a 116.29. Now you know on stage two how hard I try to get into the 18s. We managed to get into an 18.6. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you where the diff, the diff has changed, and that was a lot better. I felt on track, easier to control the lock-in um, in the corner than what the cars was, but I double the money, it should be better. So yeah, anyway, the car was absolutely flying. So that was session number two, and I went out to third session, and I thought, I'm not worrying about lap times now, I'm going to get involved with some cars on track, we're going to have a little bit of a battle, so... Um, flying around, I'm having some good little duels with, with cars, and my gauge pings 105C, my temp. So that pings off, and I'm thinking, right, I'll spray the intercooler spray, see if I can get the overall temps to come down. Uh, then it went into limp mode. So we lost power, just wooden boost. I, I knew it was water temp. So I comes in, let the car cool back down, and then after about half an hour or something, I go back out, car's fine. It's back running fine again. I do about two hot laps, uh, I think, and get a 16.01, and that wasn't even the full. There's more to come from the car, but anyway, that's besides the point. It was flying. Temps went up, the alarm went off again at 105. So I backed off, stopped, um, didn't push no more, just completely lifted off for a lap. Cooled down for a lap. Temps came down really fast, back down to like low 90s, high 80s. So I then did two or three hard laps again, stayed out. Temps went up again. Um, so I thought I'll do a cool down and come back in. So I knew I had temp issues and I was thinking, well, uh, my intake temps were high as well. Now, compared to Connor, who was there, I was 10 degrees hotter for water than him, and I was 10 degrees hotter for intake temps than him. So I started to think, is my intercooler not working right? Is the rad block? Well, what's wrong? Like, cause I, I've definitely got an issue here. Right, just want to cut into this part of the video. I just mentioned some things to you I should have said in the video, and, and I forgot about. But anyway... Uh, we were going into limp mode at 105 degrees C 
so whatever safety limits were on we were cutting in at 105 now the bars on the dashboard at this point were still showing four bars now if you remember i i did have issues back last year at dawn and done now i didn't have my gauge to show the actual temperature back then the first symptom i knew that i was temps were hot back at dawn and done if you remember was i went into limp mode and when i went into limp mode i was at six bars on the dash so uh, I don't know what temp six bars is, but like the car didn't cut any power until six bars, whereas like now it cut power four bars, 105. Um, so just bear that in mind. There's some things I'm going to talk about at the end of the video. I think some of you will probably be casting judgments before you get to the end of the video. So that's why I thought I'm going to pop this bit in now. So if you take nothing else from the video, just remember I had water temp issues back in Donut and and the temps went a lot higher than all the safety measures cut in on this tune so just just keep that in mind anyway back to the video don't miss anything i'll watch till the end because i really do want to listen to to the last uh, bit where i sum up so i think i went off for session four my first flying lap i come out the tower corner and it, the car was flying it came out the corner it felt so quick and then all of a sudden poof, big plume of smoke at the back now i am going to rear facing camera when this happened a big plume of smoke so in, my initial thought was i thought i'd blown the turbo um so i got through the chicane i pulled straight off onto the grass just in case i was leaking oil it's quite a bizarre situation actually because i pulled off then i got into the little slip road i sat in the car for about two three minutes i could see no red lights were coming on I don't think they'd even noticed that I had stopped. Cars were still flying past, and I thought, well, no one's coming. I can see some smoke coming out from um, from the left side, and I thought, well, I'm not staying staying in the car. I want I want to go and, like, go and have a look to see whether we got a little fire or something's going on. Yeah, so I got a small fire extinguisher in the car. So anyway, I get out of the car. Cars are still going, no red lights, and I thought, well, I don't care. I want to make sure the cars are right now. So anyway, pulled them on in. I can see no oil at this moment. Look under the car and see no oil. And I thought the smoke was coming from the brakes. So it turns out it wasn't coming from the brakes. I'll explain more about that in a minute. There was a little smoke from the brakes, but that wasn't wasn't the issue. So I thought, well, I'll get back in the car and I'll drive off the track because I wasn't far. I was close to the, the the pit entry. Starts the car up and it sounds like a Subaru it's running on three cylinders so I managed to limp it back and straight away I thought the engine I'm down the cylinder the engine is gone so it gets back in Jordan the corner and there Jordan starts pulling plugs taking things apart we're having a look in and at first we thought right have the catch can overflowed and pumped oil back through but I was just a bit hopeful so then Jordan pulled the air filter um, where I saw smoke coming from the left side I think that was the smoke coming out of the um, out of the air filter and then just belching up uh, pulled the cap dipstick smoke was coming up out of the engine then once I was parked up the oil started running out of the intake so the intake system was full of oil and by the time I got back to the trial then it started bleeding itself out so we still had plenty of oil still about half half full on the dipstick and I know it was full before I started so uh, Jordan then pulled the plugs and number one was oily two three and four i think we're okay so pretty much then engine was gone um there was no saving it um so anyway this is where i'm up to now <clears throat> um cars home which was a nightmare in itself right it got home at 2 15 in the morning and bear in mind i phoned for recovery at uh 1 1 30 something like that anyway it's a long old day but we got the car home so I'm now going to start looking into diet. I know the engine's gone, but for the sake of looking, I'm going to do a compression test and see how that fares. Pull the plugs, have a look myself and see see what it is. But yeah, there's no hope. The engine is gone. All right, so this is what I've got. Take the ITG off. And I don't know if you can see that, but the oil has been running out of it. There's oil in there, so there's plenty pouring out. Yeah, you can see what it's down on the floor now. Down here. Right, so down in there you can see where the ATG is just blowing a lot of oil down there. Now that is where 
I think most of the smoke was coming from when I pulled over coming back out of the intake and then coming up the side of the car so there's oil around there um, so what I'm going to do now is pull the uh, plugs we'll have a look at them and then we'll see if my compression tester fits well to pull the plugs if you've never done it you just pull off these caps pull the little grey clips out squeeze down so that's your electrical connections and then you've got 8 mil bolts so we'll take off the coil packs and then you can pop out the plugs then. <clears throat> right, so that's the plug from number one and that is pretty oily as we found yesterday when Jordan took them out of the track. So we pretty much know that that's a problem. Why don't we put the rest now and see how they compare. Right, so number two, something quite sooty, but it's not oily. Number three, same as number two. Number four, much the same that, sooty, um, but no oil. So, number one is our biggest issue. What I'm going to do now is get a compression tester. Well, I'll probably put a torch down the bores actually first, have a look and then um, see if my compression tester will fit i've got my compression tester now and hopefully this extension bar fits uh you can see i've got some ptfe around there that's because the old rub rubber ring broke before but i've since replaced that so hopefully that all pressure and work and hopefully it fits this engine so only one way to find out is going to try it some of you might also be thinking that with that amount of oil and the problems that the engine's dead anyway what's the point in compression testing it but this is just for my own peace of mind something to do and also for a video for you something for you to watch i do want to eventually take this engine apart and find out exactly what went wrong with it it's not going to achieve nothing other than giving me answers to maybe what exactly failed but a compression test will, will tell us whether we leak in from cylinder one into cylinder two and, and things like that so we get an idea but it's obviously it's not going to fix anything it's just going to help us understand what is wrong Right, so you should be able to see that gauge blame that you won't see completely, but if it does rise, you'll see. I'll go and give it a crank now. I'm really not expecting to see any compression in there, to be honest, but we'll give it a go. Right, so we've got a, a tiny amount, uh, which is nothing, so yeah. We'll call that no compression on cylinder one. Right, so we've got about 140 PSI. Now, I was definitely making a different noise when I was cranking it. I think it was probably coming from cylinder one. So let's see what number three and four do. Actually, that noise wasn't so bad when I was cranking then. And when I took the extension shaft out, the O-ring was up the shaft. So whether the, no whether the noise was the um, air blowing past the, the threads, it could have been actually. It looked like it blew the O-ring out. So um, I'm not sure if it was the pistons in number one, but I don't know. We're discovering things as we go. Yeah, it's done the same with this one, though. Blowing the o ring out, and then I won't over tighten it because that's how I end up chewing up the o rings. Uh, so I don't know. Right, finally, now let's see what number four makes. Right, it's pretty much exactly the same, a tad over 140, so them three pretty even. Right, so I think really. We haven't achieved a lot, but at least we now know that definitely cylinder one is dead. Um, we kind of knew it was on three anyway, didn't we? So, um, but that's how you do a compression test. Well, sort of. <laughs> uh, don't always copy what I do, but we've done it. So practically zero compression in cylinder one. A lot of oil in the bore. So cylinder one is dead. Now, originally when the engine first went, I was thinking, well, cracked, cracked liner oval bore like what most people have um 
let me know what you think though do you think the piston rings have gone or do you think the bore is overvalued? what has led to a sucking in the oil do you think um now i do want to turn into the engine let me know if you want to see that um i mean if there's interest i'll do it because to be completely honest with you i need to fund a new engine so if there's interest in making more videos on it and i can make more money from doing the videos then that's going to help me fund the engine so if you want to see it i'll eventually uh i'll pull it apart the other thing is i have got to buy a new engine i have just bought a new diff so i am trying to do some extra things to earn some money which is selling some car bits on eBay. You know about the Luffy gauges? I am waiting for a delivery on them. I've got 40 of them on order now. And I've got so many people waiting. So the small amounts I make from that will go towards the engine. I'm also doing uh, dummy OBD plugs. So I'll put a link in the description if you want one of them. Pick one of them up on my eBay. The little amount I make from them also will help fund an engine. So if you want to help me out, buy some in off me. And... <laughs> watch all the ads in this video go back watch it again <laughs> so yeah i'm my spirits are up a little bit but i am disheartened i'm not gonna lie to you i i did think that once i went stage three eventually my engine would go i mean it just seems the way things go in there but i was hoping i'd get a little bit more than one track day well one morning's track day so it hasn't really been a good week first the diff now the engine but you roll the dice to take your chances then I put the big turbo on and this is what's happened so yeah if you can help me out with any things in the comments if you understand um, what's led to the failure then you know what to do let me know down below but just make the comments sensible I don't want to be bashing a tuna which is I know what's going to happen um, the logs have been viewed by other people who've said you know it's a safe tune anyway and i'm not i'm not bashing the tuna i think it's just potluck with these engine and it's blown so please be sensible um if you can but the internet's the internet and unfortunately i can't control that but it is what it is um hopefully you enjoyed watching the video i've got nothing more to say other than i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching and bye